Lessons learnt from the disastrous Queensland floods appear to have been over, uh, appear to have overlooked a dangerous and even deadly legacy. Mould is growing undetected in buildings across Brisbane and may soon literally be climbing up the inside of walls. The hot, steamy Queensland climate provides ideal conditions for the mould to grow. Yet there are no standards for mould remediation in Australia and not enough trained restorers. Emily Stewart reports. You wouldn't know it now, but the Fairfield Gardens shopping centre in Brisbane was extensively damaged earlier this year after being inundated by flood water. And it's only recently reopened after four months of rebuilding. Retail First manages the centre and they engaged restorers to clean out the property within days. But mould had already begun growing within the walls. What mould there was that, we, that was revealed after we pulled the gyprock off the walls, we, we cut out straight away. Darren Hitchens says they caught the mould early and it had only covered around 5% of the shopping centre. Little bits and pieces, especially in the MDF, which swelled um, in part of the shop fronts. We cut all the shop fronts to about 1,200 mils, obviously to stop um, any effects of any mould um, growing and, and, and spreading throughout the centre. Mould has been eliminated from the shopping centre, but mycologist Dr Heike Kemp warns in many buildings the clean-up operation cleared the obvious damage but left unseen mould behind walls and in crevices. There is a massive increase in mould in buildings. We are very well aware that there is quite a, unfortunately quite a large amount of uh, buildings who are not restored properly. In Australia, the threat posed by mould is not well known, but after hurricanes Katrina and Rita ripped through New Orleans in the United States in 2005, mould grew in almost 50% of homes, and officials believe this led to an asthma epidemic, which is now the subject of an extensive study. Dr Kemp says there are a number of health impacts from living or working near mould. There is a potential that you inhale them, or through skin contact they get in your body and then the symptoms of that can be anything from upper respiratory, irritable bowel, but it also can be behavioural changes. There are no standards for mould remediation in Australia and only a guideline to go on. And experts say the sheer number of buildings in Brisbane affected means it will be difficult to fix them all. Some Australian insurance companies cover mould remediation work that arises due to the inundation of floodwaters. I think there is great effort done from insurance company to actually do that, but there is a lack of awareness and there is a lack in the industry of restorers and specifically mould restorers. It is not government regulated, so there is at the moment unfortunately not enough quality control. Particularly I think small business operators uh, need to be uh, very much aware of it because I know that there are some industrial special risks policies which exclude mould um, as a as a first party claim under their policies. David Gerke from the Workers Health Centre says business owners who are rebuilding on their own need to be particularly wary of the potential for mould growth. I think most people see a, a lot of commercials on TV in relation to exit mould and, and, and a lot of the people that I've spoken to have actually dealt with it in that way. Although exit mould uh, would probably you know, uh, do, you know, do an okay looking job but However, it does come back, and it comes back relatively quickly. You get it right from the start. I, I don't think it's very difficult to go back, because once the mould, I, I guess, eventually gets into, to, into a centre, it's very hard to, to eliminate. Of course, there have been major floods across Australia before, but David Gerke says this time there's a huge number of CBD buildings affected, and many are fitted out differently. Since the uh, 70s, I guess, our, our building products have modified. Um, uh, we've become more... Um, uh, like plasterboard and, and all that sort of things that can hold moisture for quite substantial amounts of time. There have been a number of legal battles regarding mould in the US and Brisbane lawyer David Muir says there's the potential for damages awards here too. In circumstances where, for instance, um, people in the building industry um, haven't taken proper precaution to avoid um, the growth of mould, uh, where perhaps the building hasn't been stripped back satisfactorily or the materials haven't been dried out um, satisfactorily. Although he says it's unlikely Australia will have the huge numbers of legal actions they've seen in the United States. They have a different legal system there where 
the um, jury give quantum verdicts and, and also they have a system where if you litigate it's rare to get a cost order against you. So there are a few barriers here uh, in Australia at least um, to the kind of litigation that uh, we've seen in the United States. Workplace Health and Safety Queensland declined an interview request but in a statement it told the ABC it's reluctant to lend weight to the suggestion that mould should be a major concern for the state's business community. The department says it received around 190 flood and cyclone related complaints this year. 18 were about mould and none of these involved serious illness. Dr Heike Kemp says mould restoration needs to be taken more seriously. We actually had government involvement, that we had an Australian standard, not just a guideline, that we had mandatory courses that people who do mould courses, that they actually learn how to do it and that they need to have a minimum education. If you want to be a carpet cleaner in Australia, you have to have a certificate four in carpet cleaning or certificate six. If you want to be a mould restorer, you do not need any certification whatsoever. So at this stage, it's up to businesses to be aware of the risks and on the lookout for mould.